Welcome back to Brand 2020. Today is March 28th, 2017. What is it about the Japan education system that fails in the delivery of having children speak English or communicate in English at any reasonable level? Dr. Nancy Snow, thank you very much for joining me again. I'm glad to be here and I'm glad it's in English. <laughs> What is it? Why? How come they spend so much time and effort, compulsory English language education, and still people are still rolling their R's and mashing their verbs? Well, what surprised me when I moved here was that English in the schools is not really taken until junior high. So you've got about six years to learn English. There's a strong emphasis on writing and grammar. Mm -hmm. So it puts the kids to sleep. It's not fun or entertaining. They're probably not given much of a rationale for why am I learning English? Right, and I'm, it's highly calibrated in the test scores too if you want to get into the high school or into the college. That's right. So you could maybe pass these standardized tests, but the bugaboo is this for 2020 is that you have to speak English. Right. So now we're hearing about English villages uh, arising here and there. There was one that was just announced that Tokyo Metropolitan Authority is going to have a one-day English immersion that would have a, a base of about 200,000 school kids come in and learn English and make it fun, but do it in one day. So <laughs> I don't know how English much they're going to get camp. out of that. So kind of a boot camp and... That's that's not really solving the ongoing problem as part of Japan's globalization, which is that you have an estimate of maybe 12% of the Japanese people who could communicate effectively in English. Mm -hmm. So they learn, but everywhere you go, if you're a foreign visitor, you see that there's often this reluctance. People are very helpful when you get lost. That's legendary. But in terms of conversation, sometimes you get that initial mm -hmm. resistance if you just pop up with, do you speak English? Because right. that produces a lot of anxiety. Well, especially and, if you leave Tokyo proper. I mean, it, it sure. really... You really run into that. So mm. it, it's this is not, again, a matter of we want to impose something on Japanese society. It's the Japanese government that is promoting this. It is the schools saying... We want to hire more international faculty to teach in the native English language. Is, the, is this in anticipation of the Olympics coming, or is this just a groundswell of we need to, we need, you know, English is an international language and the Japanese need to be more fluent in, in well, speaking the... Well, it's both, because we can see, too, with inviting in foreign nationals with special... Uh, skills that that's changing really your uh, residency status that you could apply for permanent residency sooner. So you have more internationals wanting to come here and putting down roots. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the foreigners who come here that's are true. here for right. a time and leave, but now it, it's right. a great place to live. And so I, I think it's sort of working both ways. And then it is related to as well this internationalization, even in research, Tim, uh, I went to another briefing on looking at gender in research and women researchers. Uh, it's, off, it's skewed to the women, isn't it? The women uh, proportionately speak better, more fluent English for some reason. Well, women go into the liberal arts in greater numbers. And my experience at a liberal arts college and liberal arts university, even Sophia University here, in Tokyo, I had a lot more women in the classroom. They were majoring in English and English literature. Many of them wanted to go abroad. Now, okay. it wasn't over half, but they were much more comfortable with speaking English, I noticed, mm -hmm. than my male students. Uh, right. And there were some male students who were okay with it, but they had spent a considerable time abroad. So when you take it to a higher level, say that young woman goes on and becomes a researcher, becomes an academic in the hard sciences or even the social sciences. If they go abroad, the statistics show now that they don't necessarily return to Japan because they have greater opportunity due to their English mastery. How about that? Most of the journals are still in English. Mm -hmm. And so once they get published and they oh, move up the ranks... That's an unfortunate brain drain. It is an unfortunate brain wow. drain, and it's related to womenomics. Mm -hmm. So this study that was done by Elsevier, Gender in the Global Landscape, 
when it's related to Japan, it shows that there's much greater outflow of these Japanese researchers than inflow. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's due in part, I'm sure, because they are comfortable at other universities, not only in feeling freer and in more of an equality environment, but also because they have learned English. And that's something that needs to be communicated at the much lower grades, mm -hmm. that it's not just fun and this is a novelty, it's a but that it will really, right. yeah, it is a necessary. It's part of your overall toolkit, your mm -hmm. skills. And even with communication being still predominantly nonverbal, Nevertheless, right. if you go into business or if you go into the sciences, and we know about all the opportunities for women in science, technology, the so-called STEM fields, then they should, they should embrace this. Right. And a one-day immersion is still not really getting at the, the crux of the problem here. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this incessantly, but there hasn't been a whole lot of change. And that is that you still have Japanese faculty who are non-native non speakers of English teaching English. Right. So I'm hoping with these English villages that there will be more foreign nationals uh, who have that mastery over English. Mm -hmm. And why don't they just tell stories or share stories with each other and make it something that really gets kids right. excited about perhaps reading in the English language mm -hmm. as well? Well, like it or not, Japan is gradually becoming more and more of a melting pot including lots of nationalities and lots of languages, one of them is English. Please stay tuned.